Listen up or run for cover. Bradley Bums. is dropping. Bums. So I've got the raw talent. Yeah. I just need the now the techniques and some good, strong coaching. <laughs> but, but, you know, to me, it's like when I walk out on stage, the first thing I think about is what do I say? To open it up. Well, the idea is, and this is why I say I've made guys bigger than you cry. Not really. I've worked with a lot of ex-military who now work in aerospace. And all the teams that work with these people always love it because I, you know, I might be five foot one and they might be six foot four. But I'm saying you are not going to leave here till you know what your opening is. Yeah. Because what often I hear, people have got their presentation together, but they say, I'm going to wait till I'm at the event and see what's happening and make a personal connection. Yeah. You cannot trust inspiration. You cannot trust that something just happened that everybody knows that you can tie into your opening. So I would say if there is only one area of your presentation you script, not that you're going to read it, but you know exactly how you're going to open. That's the beginning. And then if something at the conference happens or the speaker before says something you want to tie into, do it after you're not down drag out it's always successful opening mm. so now obviously we're talking about stage speaking there's a lot of this that applies where you're on a sales floor and oh, a customer most, walks most in. of my most of my training and coaching is not for state well some of my executives they say we bungee in and speak at comp conference bungee jumping in and out because they're they're talking at industry conferences on behalf of their company so that's that but most of most of my clients they're speaking to their customers or maybe user conferences and in case people are listening, because they are on the sales floor. Oh, I'm not a public speaker. Outside the privacy of your own home, all speaking is public speaking. There is no such thing as private speaking. So even if your audience is one or a couple or five, it's still public speaking. And the principles are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And if someone gets it down, masters it, uses enough repetition, they become proficient. The more proficient they become, the more successful and consistent they become. And now they start rising up through the ranks at their organization. Yeah. Because if someone, and by the way, customer acquisition from an audience is, is from a stage is, is, is good. Mm. Like it's a very little known thing that companies can hire you, get their teams up to speed, let's say. I mean, at least decent mm. at presentations and persuasion and ultimately send them out on a tour of of stage speaking and, co and they'll come back with hundreds and hundreds of new clients mm. just from listening to this dynamic, powerful presenter. But they have to create a story and a speech and the whole nine yards. You help them do that, don't you? Oh, yeah, I do. Because a lot of my clients, they deliver a trade shows. So I help them. How do you engage people when they're walking by? And also the, a lot of the tech companies, they're in the big trade shows and they're delivering 10 minute presentations. So, of course, with a 10 minute presentation, with people are walking by, you've got to bring them in. So it takes a, a they have to be a little larger than life that they might be in their executive briefing center talking to prospects. Oh.